A day after former External Affairs Minister Natwar Singh's controversial claims over the Gandhi family, Sonia Gandhi broke her silence. Take a look at her reply. I will write a book to reveal the truth. This is what Sonia Gandhi had to say over the claims made by Natwar Singh in his interview. The former External Affairs Minister Natwar Singh during an interview alleged that Rahul Gandhi gave his mother Sonia Gandhi a 24-hour deadline to turn down the Prime Ministerial post in 2004. Rahul Gandhi feared that she would also be killed just like his father Rajiv Gandhi. But an agitated Sonia asserted that it was her inner voice that made her turn down the post and not her son. Reacting to Natwar's allegations, Sonia added, I saw my mother-in-law riddled with bullets, saw my husband assassinated. Why should I feel hurt? I am far from getting hurt by these allegations. I will write my own book and then you will know everything. BJP has targeted the mother-son duo over the issue as they claim they kept the whole nation in the dark. Renunciation of the Prime Minister uh, post uh, is a farce which was uh, done by Sonia Gandhi and the Congress uh, party and the book uh, and the interview of Natwar Singh, a close aide of Sonia Gandhi and the Gandhi family has revealed uh, the truth behind Sonia Gandhi ji not accepting the Prime Minister uh, post. Sonia Gandhi and, and Rahul Gandhi including the Congress party should apologize to the nation for misleading that it was a renunciation and a big sacrifice made by Sonia Gandhi in the interest of the country. Natwar Singh also claims that the Gandhi family urged him to avoid putting candid narrations in his books and Sonia Gandhi even apologized to him for the way he was treated in 2005. So are these just angry allegations or is there any truth in them? Only time will tell. A News Now report. Well, yet another instance of a gullible woman falling prey to the charms of a crook has come to light. The incident involves a young orphan woman, Padmani, a resident of Mysore. Look at these photographs. One person in them is Padmani, happy at her marriage to the man of her dreams. Did we say man of her dreams? We stand corrected. It should be devil of her dreams. That's right. The devil in Padmini's life is Ningaraju. He looks a gentleman, but his behavior is anything but that. But why is Padmini so sad? It was four years ago that Padmini met Ningaraju. He was a prize catch for the girl. Though an orphan, her parents had left behind a lot of money and gold. He was a librarian at the Administrative Training Institute and more importantly, a member of the Mysore University's Academy. Ningaraju promised a lot to Padmini. She too was happy that she had met an ideal match and was eager to tie the knot. She did tie the knot. But Ningaraju had other plans. He demanded that she give him 70 lakh rupees to help him set up a business. Gradually, he even managed to lay his hands on the gold she had with her. The bitter truth now hits Padmini. Padmini learned that Ningaraju was married and that he had been married for nine long years. Unable to have children with his wife, Cheshri, he chose to marry Padmini secretly. Padmini <laughs> Realizing that she had been cheated, she approached the police for help. But officials at the women's police station in Mysore were anything but helpful to Padmini. After the crewing, we had to go to the police station. We had to go to the police station. Finally, Padmini sought the help of the Women's Commission Chief Manjula Manasa. Our women police station go get there. Lolakshi or you know, it is someone the inquiry madidru. Indo Braro, woman constable or 
ಇನ್ ಫೇವರ್ ಆಫ್ ನಿಂಗರಾಜು ಅವರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಮುಖವಾಡ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದರು Padmini is now paying the price for blindly believing her admirer and lover Ningaraju who has left her hurt and dejected. Ram News 9 Mysore. US Secretary of State John Kerry is on a 3-day visit to India with today being the last day for the approval of WTO reforms. John Kerry did all that he could to convince India for its nod. Kerry presses for WTO reforms. The U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, is in India for the fifth Indo-U.S. strategic dialogue. Today, he met Finance Minister Arun Jaitley as part of the strategic dialogue. During the meeting, both sides discussed transformative initiatives in key areas such as defense and energy and also discussed the issue of snooping and terrorism. Kerry also pressed the government not to oppose the global trade reforms. India has opposed the WTO reforms that could provide a trillion dollar stimulus to the global economy. India has demanded a parallel agreement allowing developing countries to subsidies and stock food grains. With today being the deadline for the WTO reforms, Kerry has been trying his best to persuade India to agree to the reforms. John Kerry later met his counterpart Sushma Swaraj to co-chair the Indo-US strategic dialogue. Security, energy, trade and investment, science and technology, Human resource development and regional issues were the main focus of the meeting. During the meeting, John Kerry warmed up to the Modi government. He stated that Modi's Sabka Saath, Sabka Vishwas was similar to Obama's vision. In, in the new uh, government's plan for Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikus, together with all development for all, uh, is a concept and a vision that is not unlike that expressed by President Obama and it is one that we support wholeheartedly. Our private sector is, easy, is very eager to be a catalyst for India's development and our government will enthusiastically support those kinds of development efforts. John Kerry impressed by IIT students. Earlier in the day, Kerry took time out of his busy schedule and visited the prestigious IIT Delhi. John Kerry, along with U.S. Commerce Secretary Penny Pritzer, visited two laboratories of the Indian Institute of Technology and interacted with students. He visited the Applied Microbiology Laboratory and Bioprocess Lab and looked impressed by the projects that have been taken up by the students. Impressed by the projects, Kerry interacted with the students and showed keen interest in finding out more about them. He was especially impressed by the project on biodegradable plastics and he added that it will be a huge contribution to the world. A News 9 report. Vijay Malia has appeared before the magistrate court with regards to an income tax case. The income tax department claims that Kingfisher owes 266 crore rupees in arrears to them. Kingfisher Airlines chairman Vijay Malia had sought exemption from personally appearing before the Special Court for Economic Offences in Bengaluru earlier in April after being served a summons in three cases filed by the Income Tax Department. The cases were filed against the airline and Malia for not remitting tax deducted at source with the department. Copious rains in the catchment areas has resulted in increased inflows into the dams in Karnataka. The water level is just three feet away in KRS Dam to reaching full capacity. In Yadgir, the Basaveshwaranagar Dam has reached full capacity and water has been released from it. Copious rains in the catchment areas has resulted in increased inflows into the dams in Karnataka. The water level is just three feet away in KRS Dam to, from reaching full capacity. In Yadgir, the Basaveshwar Nagar Dam has reached full capacity and water has been released from it. 